You can see a cosmic explosion in the sky very soon. This will be a once in a lifetime event and you absolutely cannot miss it. Stay tuned to find out exactly what will explode and when you can see it. If you like it, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment so we can get the algorithm to show this super important topic to even more people. Thank you friends and welcome. We will be able to marvel at a nova in the sky in the next few weeks. So let's first clarify what it actually is. A nova, derived from the Latin word for new, is a sudden burst of brightness in a star that makes it temporarily appear much brighter. In the past, this was explained as a new star appearing in the sky, hence the name nova. Today we know that this actually has nothing to do with new stars. The process that leads to a nova is actually the result of a certain type of binary star system in which a white dwarf star and a larger star orbit ever closer together. A white dwarf is the remnant of a star similar to our sun that has exhausted its fuel reservoir and is collapsing. Our sun is also due to do this in 4 to 5 billion years. So one star is a white dwarf, the other star, often a red giant, emits matter that is attracted by the gravitational field of the white dwarf and collects on its surface. This is also known as stellar vampirism because the white dwarf sucks out the larger star like a vampire. I once asked the AI how it imagines this and I have to say I'm very happy with the result. But how can this be explained scientifically? With vampires it's obvious. They need blood to have the necessary vitamins in their bodies as they avoid sunlight and also hate garlic. It's incomprehensible. My whole circulatory system runs on garlic. Stars have nothing to do with garlic, but with the fact that a white dwarf, despite its small size, usually has an immense density, mass and therefore enormous gravity. As a result, it sucks matter from the larger but less dense and massive star. Over time, a critical amount of mass then accumulates on the surface of the dwarf. So it's like accidentally throwing 10 cloves of garlic into the pasta instead of one and then exceeding the garlic limit. In the case of stars, this limit is called the Chandrasekhar limit, named after the Nobel Prize winning physicist Subramanian Chandrasekhar. This leads to enormous pressure and extreme temperatures, which ultimately trigger thermonuclear reactions, similar in principle to the reaction in hydrogen bombs on Earth. This leads to the matter on the surface of the white dwarf being ignited in a huge explosion, then it goes boom and a nova occurs that can be seen light years away. But now I can already hear some of you asking curiously, But what's the difference between a nova and a supernova? It's a bit like the difference between Saiyajin and Super Saiyajin in Dragon Ball. Supernovae are much more massive events and result from the collapse of a massive star at the end of its life cycle. When stars have at least eight times the mass of our sun, they eject their shells into space in an unimaginably powerful explosion at the end of their existence. Novae, on the other hand, occur in binary star systems and have a somewhat less extreme effect on their surroundings. And the most important difference, a nova can be passed through several times by a star because the star survives the explosion, i.e. the ejection of the gas shell. The white dwarf can therefore produce a nova explosion, falls below the garlic, Er Chandra Sekhar limit again and then continues to suck matter from the red giant and simply does the whole thing again until he has completely sucked out his victim like an insatiable Klaus Kinski in his role as Dracula in the movie Nosferatu. Uh. I think this is the first time anyone has ever put a Dragon Ball and a Klaus Kinski reference in the same video. Well anyway, astronomers love novae because novae are often classified based on the increase in brightness and the duration of the outburst. They can be visible for a few days or even weeks before losing brightness and then returning to their normal state. This helps scientists to understand more about the evolution of stellar systems, physical processes in space and also cosmic distance measurement. So studying novae helps to deepen our understanding of the universe and how it works. Which is why astronomers always turn into an excited Sheldon Cooper when a nova is imminent. I'm so excited! but I just can't hide it. Okay, enough pop culture reference for today, but the really exciting part is yet to come because we'll soon be able to marvel at such a nova in the sky, starting from the star system T. Coronae Borealis. This is a binary star system that is only around 3,000 light years away from Earth within the Milky Way. In cosmic terms, this is a stone's throw away as the Milky Way is at least 200,000 light years across, according to the latest estimates. The system consists of a white dwarf and a red giant, which are linked together in a close 
close orbit. This particular constellation of the system makes it prone to periodic nova outbursts, as we have already learned. The last documented nova of Tikronai Borealis occurred in 1946. Based on the historical data and astronomical models, astronomers have calculated that another outburst will occur from now until September this year. So it could be that you watch this video, go out tonight and see a huge explosion in the night sky and in the worst case scenario it won't happen until September, which isn't that long away. Before some of you smart Alex write this in the comments again, of course the nova happened a long time ago and when we see it, the light will have completed its journey from the star system 3000 light years away to us. So this year we will see a violent explosion that lights up the night sky and happened 3000 years ago. Let someone else say astronomy is boring, what exactly can we look forward to? During the peak of the nova, T Corona Borealis will increase dramatically in brightness. From its normal magnitude value of plus 10, it will jump to about plus 2 in the night sky, making it visible to the naked eye. That's right, you won't need expensive telescope equipment, you'll be able to see it with the naked eye. The brightness of the nova will be comparable to that of the North Star, which means that the event will be easy to spot in the sky if you know the position. I can already hear some of you saying that. Then there must be some kind of catch. You can probably only see it from Timbuktu or something. No. Sky watchers will have the best chances from the Northern Hemisphere. The nova will appear as a new bright star in the sky and is expected to be visible to the naked eye for several days and with binoculars for more than a week before it fades in brightness again. And where exactly should you look? The T. Cronae Borealis system is normally too faint to see without aids, but you can find the outburst by locating the constellation Crona Borealis or the Northern Crown. This constellation appears as a small semicircular arc between the more familiar constellations of Hercules and Bootes. Bradley Schaefer, Professor Emeritus of Physics and Astronomy at Louisiana State University says, It might even happen tonight, it's probably within the next couple months and very likely before the end of the summer. I find the idea that this nova is periodic and that our ancestors throughout the ages have also seen it super fascinating. In fact, there is a record of German monks from Augsburg in 1217. These monks didn't know what it was at the time, of course, but they highlighted this eruption as one of the two most important events of the year. And they called it Signum Mirabile in Latin, which means miraculous omen. So they interpreted it as a good sign, and in my humble opinion, absolutely rightly so. When the time comes, I will of course let you know straight away, but you can only do that if you subscribe to my channel. Subscribing is absolutely free, you'll never miss another galactic video and will help me immensely. So make sure you press the subscribe button so you don't miss the most amazing astronomical event of the year. And if you're already a subscriber, please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. But perhaps we are about to receive a completely different signal from the vastness of the cosmos. Because a renowned scientist says we'll soon find aliens no April Fool's joke, folks. It could very well be that first contact is imminent. I've explained why this is the case and what we can expect if we really do find extraterrestrial life in the video below. And if you would like to support my work, please visit the Astro Shop. Every purchase helps me to continue the channel. Thank you very much. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, friends.